Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, my rocketry friends. Well, it's finally here. The SpaceX Falcon 9 Crew Dragon rocket by Estes in a 1 100th scale uh, sizing, as you can see here. I actually think it was done in collaboration with Sp SpaceX and Estes together, which is super neat. Um, Estes has been doing some teaser photos for a little bit, and it's obviously. Well, for those that know what this is, quite obvious what they were they're bringing out next. And uh, being a space nerd that I am myself, I knew I had to have one. Um, a little disappointed that it's a ready to fly rocket. I'm a builder myself, however, um, given what this this model is about uh, and the uniqueness of it, um, I knew I had to have one. So, uh, of course, pulled the trigger on it when it first became available. Just to, a week or two ago so I'm excited about it and honestly my first impressions are that this thing is actually really nicely done um, my expectations were, were exceeded um, which is good because this thing was a, actually pretty expensive it's a it's a smaller low power rocket and uh, the price is quite high and I get that because you know there's the uh, licensing that that um, SS needs to pay for and make up the costs and whatever else and they went above and beyond the packaging um, it's really cool foil graphic on this super heavy duty box and, and plush foam and it was sleeved and um, wrapped in tissue paper and like quadruple wrapped in foam bubble wrap like they wanted this thing to come to you um, in pristine condition which it did and I'm sure all these things added uh, a layer to that cost itself but going to the rocket itself um, I was really really impressed with it. Um, one of the things that first caught my eye was uh, the, the finish itself. Um, I saw some pictures of this thing, pictures of it, and it looked like it was like, you know, well painted, but it's actually a thin plastic sleeve um, over a standard Estes airframe, which that was kind of cool. So you don't have any of the spiral tubing. It doesn't feel like cardboard. Like it feels like a nice model that's flyable, which is really, really neat. Um, and all these graphics are printed on here. That was another uh, kind of concern I had. You know, you don't want to spend um, you know what this thing costs and have you know graphics that are peeling up or off-centered or corners that are lifting and uh, whatever else so that was a really really cool um, uh, surprise that I wasn't aware of and um, I'm going to show you some of the details here um, of the the Raptor engine assembly this twists off and so you get to the motor uh, location itself uh, but check out these landing legs like the the detail is, is really nice. They don't unfold, um, which would have been cool, but that probably would have made this thing even more ridiculously expensive. But uh, the, the detail is very, very nice. It feels good. It's solid. Uh, let's take a look at these grid fins. Again, the detail is is there. Like I'm, I'm really happy with it. They don't sit like molded into the air from itself. They're kind of um, extruded just like they have on the actual uh, rocket itself. And then let's take a look at this uh, trunk module and crew dragons, or the trunk and the crew dragon module. The paint lines are crisp. The graphics look great. Yeah, take a look at that. And this is actually the nose cone itself. So this is what you know comes off and you know, performs like your your standard rocket and has this neat little index indexing uh, tab. So it kind of locks into place, doesn't twist and turn, which is really really cool. So. Um, yeah, I just wanted to show you guys this. Um, it's very, very neat. Um, I'm quite happy with it. It has exceeded my expectations. Um, other things it includes, um, unfortunately, because it's a thrust vectored model in real life, and this one isn't. You have to put this. Uh, I, I'll be honest. I don't. I don't like clear fin rockets or uh, fin can some that go on scale scale rockets. But this is what you need to actually fly it, which I'll probably fly this thing once or twice. Um, they call for C53s or C63s. The C53 is a little bit more punchy off the pad, so I'll probably try that because it's it's not it's not heavy, but it's not light either. So I think the the punchier C5 might be a better better choice for this thing. Um, we'll find out when we fly it. Um, it also comes with just a standard um, S parachute that you need to hook up to uh, the nose cone or trunk and dragon assembly and a very basic instruction set. Of course, being that it's a ready-to-fly rocket and no building required, it just gives you a high-level overview of um, how to set it up and hook up the parachute and, and fly it. But, um, or in this case, how to <laughs> use the display stand 
uh, piece here, which is literally just untwist that, slide that in, put your Raptor engines back over that piece, and then it's got this neat little base that sits, and then there you have it, which is honestly probably how this rocket will live most of its life, and kind of the reason why I bought it. <laughs> but uh, so that's that's about it, guys. Um, really, really neat. Um, a little pricey, but I would say um, I recommend it. Um, it's a unique model, very scale. Um, it feels nice, like it looks good. Um, so we'll put together some videos of, of flying it. I don't want to fly it too many times because. Uh, what it is, but I think just keeping it in this nice little plush foam box and knowing that I have it is satisfactory enough for, for me, but uh, we'll still give it a whirl. It's meant to be flown, so um, yeah, go out and grab one of these things if you guys are interested. It, it, it seems nice. Um, go have some fun, fly high, fly safe, and we'll talk to you guys in the next one. Thanks all.